Hello, boys and girls. My name is Otsusti, and I am back with another Minecraft tutorial. Kind of. I will show you how you can create a time lapse from multiple replay mod recordings into something seamless. Most of the time, I just do not have the time to spend the time. That's a lot of times in one sentence in a continuous block recording a build for a time lapse and I end up with several clips of various lengths. The first thing involves a bit of mass as we need to know how long each of the segments needs to be in the time lapse in order for a continuous speed. My rule of thumb is one minute of footage should equal about one second of time lapse. When you start off, you probably have already something at hand that defines the target length, be it an audio clip or a recorded commentary. For this example, I choose an audio track of length three minutes 27, which are 207 seconds. All clips added together are 256 minutes. Now we divide the target length 207 through the actual length 250. 56 and get the factor of 0 0.8086. Multiplying this factor with the clip length results in the length of the various segments. It might be a good idea to run some of those values up and others down so that when the result is added up together they sum up to the total length or slightly more. Let's sum up each segment with all the previous ones so we know when that segment ends in seconds. The start time we get from the end of the previous segment. With all the mass out of the way, let's open the first recording and define the complete camera pass for the time lapse while ignoring the timestamps. I assume that you are familiar with replay mode and how it works. If not, there are quite a few tutorials out there giving you the basics. First, we define the camera position at the start of the pass and go into the properties by double clicking on the diamond shape and adjust the timestamp to zero. Next, we place the camera where it should be at the end of the complete time lapse, even if this position will never be reached in this first segment. And then we set the time to 208 seconds, which is 3 minutes 28. Now we make sure that we get the proper camera pass from start to end. If you have turned the camera pass off, turn it on. For something simple as this, I jump to the middle and place a camera checkpoint. Then I repeat the same thing again for the first and second half so that I get a nice flowing path that does not intersect with any buildings. Next we jump with a right click to the position where the first segment ends and the second starts. 46 seconds in. Mark a camera checkpoint and ensure the timestamp is at the correct time without any milliseconds. Then we move on through all the segments and repeat the process so that we have a camera checkpoint wherever a segment starts or ends. 
When we have done this for all segments, we can remove the help checkpoints we inserted first to get the correct camera path. We end up with these checkpoints. If this does not yet make much sense, wait and see. Then we leave the replay mod viewer and go to the directory where the replay mod recordings are stored. If you do not know where that is, you can open the edit screen of a game and then jump to the backup folder, move one up and there you see replay recordings. As you can see, I'm on a Linux operating system, but it should not be much different on a Windows or a Mac. Next, we are looking for MCPR files, more specifically the one of the recording which is edited. In effect, these files are archives, so they can be opened with any archive application like WinZip or 7-Zip on Windows. Let's open the archive and the last file in there is timelines.json. This file continue the data of the camera and time checkpoints. So far, we only defined the camera checkpoints at the correct point in time for the complete time lapse. Let's extract the file into the recordings folder. Now we add that JSON file to all the other recording archives so that they all have the same camera pass. Back in the replay mod viewer for the first segment, we can finish this one. The first segment is straightforward. We add a timestamp at the beginning and another one at the end at 3 minutes 28. Then we add another one at 46 seconds, which is the end of the first segment. This one also matches up with the end of the original footage, but just one milliseconds earlier. When rendering this out, we get a 3 minutes 28 seconds clip, of which we only need the first 46 seconds. So we can cut this down in editing. The second segment is similar to the first one. However, at the beginning, we have to apply the same trick we did at the end. Have a timestamp at the beginning and a second one millisecond later when the segment actually starts. From here on out, all following segments follow this pattern. I will finish up the other segments and then we can have a look at editing together. Editing is a two-part job. First, you cut up the footage that you have so that you get the segments that should go into the final video and then you patch those together. For the cutting, I use Avi Demux which is open source and available on all platforms. What we need to do is cut off the part of each rendered segment that contains the part from the end of the segments to the 3 minute 28 mark. In the case of the first one, we want everything from the beginning up to second 46. Select the segment and then save it. We do this for all segments and each segment is longer than the previous one until the last one has the full length. For the editing together I use OpenShot, another open source application available for all platforms. Other applications work in a similar fashion, so you should have no problem applying these techniques to your favorite one. The way we have cut up the segments, they all end with the part that we actually want to show. And apart from the first one, they have a section in the beginning we are not interested in. 
The simplest way is to stack the clips on different tracks with the first one on top, the second below and so on. This way the unwanted part of the second is hidden under the layer of the first clip. When rendering out all this we end up with one seamless time lapse. We can even add our audio track. If you want to see the final result, check out my most recent Minecraft episode, where this time lapse is a part of. I hope you found this helpful. If so, consider leaving a like, and if you subscribe, I will see you around. Goodbye!